Section 4-5, Multiplication Rule, Part 2, Complements and Conditional Probability. Two main ideas here. One, to use complement rule to find probability of at least one. And two, find the conditional probability, that is, when we're narrowing down your sample space. Let's take a look at the phrase, at least one. This means more than one. Think about the opposite of one or more. That's none. So the complement of at least one is getting none. So it follows from the probability of getting at least one is 100% minus the probability of its complement which is getting none. This comes from our complementary rule. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose we have a collection of 50 DVDs that reports a defect rate of 0.5%. The probability of getting a defective disc is 0 0.005 and the probability of getting a good disc is 0.995. They are complements of each other, defective and non-defective. The question is, what is the probability of getting at least one defective disk? So let's write out the probability notation. If we were to do this directly, we would need to find probability of getting one defective, or two defective, or three defective, and so on this can get quite lengthy with 50 of them. So instead we'll take advantage of the complement rule. Now the probability for one good disk is 0.995. Using the multiplication rule we can do this for 2, 3, etc. all the way to 50. In math we can use the exponent notation to say we'll multiply 0.995 50 times to itself. So the probability of getting at least one defective disk is about 22 percent. Now let's take a look at conditional probability. The conditional probability of an event B happening, given that A had already happened, is given by this notation. P of B vertical line A. The vertical line translates to the phrase, given that. It turns out that this is equal to the probability of A and B happening, divided by the probability that A happened. The basic idea is to assume that A had already occurred, and so the events and the sample space will take this into account. Let's take a look at an example. This is a drug test scenario where employees were tested for drug use. We have 44 true positives, 6 false negatives, 90 false positives, and 860 true negatives. Just to rephrase this, we're looking for the probability that we select an actual drug user given that this person tested positive. So this is a probability we're trying to find. We'll use the conditional probability rule. In order to find these probabilities, we need some totals. There is a total of 134 subjects who tested positive and a grand total of 1,000. So the probability of selecting a drug user and a person who tested positive is 44 out of 1,000. The probability of selecting someone who tested positive is 134 out of 1,000. This reduces to 44 over 134. So out of all those who tested positive, the probability that this person actually is a drug user is about 33%. One final note, the order of the conditional probability does make a difference. 
So just be careful not to confuse the order. Okay, that's the end of section 4-5. And that will be the end of our chapter 4. There's still sections 4-6 and 7 and 8, but we will skip those and that will not be covered in our course.